I logged my first manta ray night dive August 13th, 1985, down at what they then called the Kona Surf Hotel. Back then, the manta rays were attracted to the lights right in front of the hotel. The lights brought in plankton and the manta rays naturally came to feed on the plankton. In 1993, the dive became very, very popular. It went from being one boat once a month to five or six or ten boats a night. At that time, all the local dive shops got together and they wrote the guidelines for the manta ray night dive, which are designed to make the dive safe and fun for people and manta rays. The manta rays are one of our major attractions here in Kona, and it's been an attraction now for over 10 years. They come into the night dive location. It's a, a location they come into to actually get clean during the day. And what divers started realizing is if they had light sources near that area, that it attracted plankton in and then the manta rays would come in to get that bountiful supply of plankton that was accumulated in one little location. It's absolutely amazing. It's another world to have all those lights down there, all the divers, the bubbles coming through and the mantas coming through. It's just an outrageous experience. Plankton is part of the lower food chain out here and plankton actually can divide, be divided up into two different categories. You have your phytoplankton and your zooplankton. Phytoplankton is basically your grass in your backyard, they're autotrophs, they make their own energy and they're much, much tinier. Zooplankton is what we're concerned with on the night dive and that's all your critters, so your bugs and everything that you would think about in your backyard, but out here they're copepods and amphipods, things of that source that actually have some movement and they can move towards that area. Well, the moray eels out here, just like the manta rays, have started to get used to people and what they've learned, they can't see very well. And at night, by having that large light source, they come in and they can use the lights better to hunt. Well, along with attracting the manta rays that are eating on the plankton, we also attract a lot of fish in that area, hole hole, and a lot of goat fish. And the more eels have learned that if they wrap themselves around those lights or around other people, they can start trying to grab fish down that are trying to come in and eat on the zooplankton. Manta rays are oviviviparous, which means that they retain the fertilized egg inside the female. The egg hatches, and then she expels the fully developed manta ray, which is about three feet across. They have one pup every three to five years. It takes manta rays between five and ten years to reach sexual maturity. They don't reproduce very quickly. We identify the manta rays here in Kona by using the spots between their gills to tell the different individuals apart. The spots on their gills are like a fingerprint, if you will. There's 97 manta rays we've identified in the last 20 years in this method. Most of them we see periodically up and down the coast. Uh, they have never ever seen any of our manta rays over in Maui, even though they've got about 100 manta rays identified over there. Likewise, we've never seen any of the manta rays from Maui over on the Big Island. So we really feel that there's no migration pattern with manta rays. One of the things is that manta rays because they don't migrate and because they have very low reproductive rate, they have very low fecundity, they are very susceptible to being overfished or being fished at all. If you fish for manta rays and you kill them, they're not going to migrate in and replenish the lost manta rays and they're not going to reproduce quickly to replenish the lost manta rays. So that's why it's so very important that we protect manta rays. Manta rays are threatened worldwide. They've recently been listed on the IUNC red list. Uh, there's not a lot of information about manta rays because there is currently no uh, commercial fishery in the U.S. for manta rays, but places where there have been commercial fisheries, such as the South Pacific and in Mexico, manta rays are virtually wiped out in just a matter of years. Well, if you want to protect manta rays, the number one thing you can do is write your legislator and the governor of Hawaii and tell them that you feel very strongly that manta rays should be protected from commercial harvesting. Make it illegal to kill or intentionally harm manta rays in Hawaii. Also, you can visit the Manta Pacific Research Foundation at www.mantapacific.org and we have our whole list of conservation guidelines on there as well as our manta ray identifications. Uh, all kinds of information is on there, mantapacific.org.